Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Campus Consortium's grant webinar featuring $252,465 Mobile Campus Grant Award winner, Kentucky Wesleyan College. In today's presentation, Mr. Brian Blunt will share his journey on how Kentucky Wesleyan College utilizes grant and how you can also apply for a similar grant. Our presenters include Mr. Brian Blunt, who is a Senior Director for Information Services and Resources for Kentucky Wesleyan College, and Mr. Vincent Lamba, Vice President of Community Engagement at Campus Consortium. We will take questions at the end of today's presentation that have been typed into the chat box or questions pane in your GoToWebinar control panel. Without further ado, allow me to present Mr. Lamba and Mr. Blunt. Over to you, Vincent. Hey, thank you, Roger. And thank you for the introduction and very warm welcome to everyone who joined us here today for the webinar. It is approximately 2 p.m. here in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and we are looking to go ahead and talk about how Kentucky Wesleyan College utilized the grant and took their mobile app project live. So apart from that, we will be giving you a brief uh, on the grant program and how you can apply for the grant. <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, uh, much about Campus Consortium. We are a nonprofit institution that unites approximately 37,000 institutions globally. We, are, we were founded back in 2003 by 14 universities, including University of Montana and Case Western Reserve University. We have scaled from then to 2,000 member institutions and now to 37,000 worldwide. Our mission is to reduce cost of education throughout the world by offering these technology grants. <clears throat> Here are some of the grant award winners from last year, uh, 2017 that is. We received roughly 500 applications. We shortlisted 48 institutions and our grant award winners were here for the university. Uh, won the grant for cloud hosting and O365 migration. Benedictine University won the grant for after hours help desk services. Dakota Wesleyan won the grant for campus safety app. And Roanoke uh, Chowan won the grant for single sign-on and identity. Geneva College won the grant for single sign-on as well. <clears throat> okay, so here is the mobile, you know, mobile app grant, and uh, you know what it brings. So the grant covers a total of two hundred fifty-two thousand four hundred sixty-five dollars over a period of five years in licensing and implementation. Uh, the qualification criteria is very simple. The applicant must be, you know, an education institution or public sector organization. Applicant, you know, demonstrates a commitment to implementing the solution. That's all we, you know, the grant committee really needs to know. Once, uh, you know, once once we receive the application, we'll do a quick qualification call. We'll, uh, of course, demo the product. Uh, once the product is, you know, uh, shown to you, then you know we'll work on awarding the grant application. So the, the grant over to you. The benefits, of course. Uh, of getting the grant is, you know, besides uh, taking advantage of the, you know, 100% funding, you can also, you, you, you know, there are a lot of things you can get. Uh, you can think about your target end user, especially your students. The mobile app platform provides your students with one-stop shop access to their grades, course content, notification, etc. It in integrates with your, you know, LMS and ERP. So, you know, it gives you about 20 applets absolutely for free. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so now I'm going to take a moment to talk about Brian, uh, and then of course I'm going to kick it over, over to him uh, to talk more about the you know uh, mo mobile mobile grant. Currently, the senior you know currently is the senior director for information services and resources for Kentucky Wesleyan College. Brian serves as the chief information officer and is responsible for leading the integration of information resources and technology activities to support the academic and operational goals of the college. Brian has 15 years of experience in the education sector and more than 20 years in analysis, programming, and IT management. Some of the more extensive projects he has led to date are CAMS Enterprise Data Conversion and ERP Implementation, Disaster Recovery, Business Continuity, Implementation, and Planning. Unified Mobile App Deployment, Razor's Edge Deployment, Mobile Computing Initiatives. Brian began his Kentucky Wesleyan College career as a computer system analyst slash administrator. 
a software information coordinator. He was responsible for providing assistance to KWC faculty and staff in maximizing the use of the student information system, CAMS Enterprise. Prior to being part of the Wesleyan ID staff, he functioned as a program director for a local K-12 public school district. And this, in his position, he helped design and direct, directed my district's STEM engineering program. Brian, I want to do a quick audio test to make sure you can hear me. Yes, Vincent. Good afternoon, everyone. Awesome. Great, Brian. Uh, over to you. I appreciate it, Vincent. And as I'm taking control of the screen, I appreciate, Vincent, the, uh, the biography. Let me hit the show screen. Sounding good. Mm -hmm. We can see your screen. Good. Outstanding. Well, again, afternoon, everybody. Uh, good morning for those of you on the West Coast. What I want to go over quickly is just a little um, history on Kentucky Wesleyan College. As the screen shows, we have been around for a little more than 150 years. We are a private, religious-affiliated um, liberal arts college. Our enrollment is approximately 800 students. The 785 is uh, about four weeks outdated, so we've got a few more kids on campus. Thank goodness now. As you see, we are running a CAMS Enterprise, which is a small niche ERP system. They compete with Aleutian as far as the small private liberal arts. We're also using a D2L Brightspace for our LMS, and as of a few months ago, we we're unified with our mobile app. Um, as you see on the slide, whoop, excuse me there. As you see on the slide, we do offer 29 majors. We've got 13 pre-professional curriculums. One thing that is not on the slide, and I'll have to give a shout out for our college, we have in the state of Kentucky, we have the highest percentage of first past students for the CPA exam. We also have the largest number of education majors that are hired prior to their graduating the program here in the area. And we're also one of the, in fact, we are the only zoology program in this geographical region. So we are small, but we do have a, a good impact in the Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, Illinois area. Now, the problem we had as you see on the screen, we had two mobile applications, but we had no way to integrate the applications. What we had on campus was a mobile app for the D2L Brightspace platform. And we also had a very, uh, I have to say honestly, a rudimentary mobile app for our CAMS Enterprise. That's the student information system. What we wanted, as you see, was to be able to integrate these two primary student information systems. Our long-term plan, we have decided that the phase one in this plan is to integrate these two platforms into a single mobile application that is geared for the student usage. Uh, second phase is going to be ex to expand this into faculty and then into staff use. And then finally, of course, we are a small IT shop. I have five full-time staff, myself included. Uh, I run a help desk staff of seven students, they are all part-time workers. Um, two are interns here on the campus and the other, what did I say, three are actual student part-time workers. So we definitely are on a tight budget, so we have to look at cost effectiveness with any solution we're looking at. So how we overcame this, just like you folks, I listened to a webinar uh, about a year ago from Campus Consortium. The webinar caught my attention. I applied for the grant. Things worked out well. We and what has happened since we have gone on board with Unified, we have a single mobile app that the students can access. In fact, we have um, done a soft go live. We haven't officially gone live with this yet until Monday. We already have 105 downloads for this application. But we have a single app that students can use to access all of their academic and some of their administrative functions. The cost that we have incurred so far has been minimal through the grant. In fact, all the implementation and startup costs have been covered through the grant, and we're basically right now just uh, paying our support costs, which we will roll over at the end of the grant. We will continue the support costs. In case you were wondering, for us, the support cost, it turns into about $12 a day for support. The communication and engagement part of this, that's going to be our phase two when we roll into the uh, mobile app, our student risk applications, and some of the communication platforms that our student life wants to use through this app. Uh, with that said, you know, the changes have been positive, on the spot, very well received. In fact, I've made the joke that our admissions 
vice president has come up to several people and told them about the app, which if you work with admissions vice president, that's probably a good thing to hear. Now, what I would like to do, they've got a static shot here of what our app page looks like. If you guys will just give me a moment, I'd like to go, we've got an emulator set up, and I want to actually show you folks what the app looks like. I've just pulled up a um, web page here. What I've got on screen is a mobile app emulator to give you an idea, guys an idea of what we have. This is the phase one that we call um, the mobile app development. What they will do is set you up with a basically a laundry list of standard public facing applications and then you can work with the unified team to also deploy some of your network required uh, user ID password required applications. The two I wanted to highlight quickly are what we call the Brightspace and the CAMS. These are the two, the LMS is Brightspace, the CAMS was the ERP application. This is what the kids were logging into separately to try and get some of their information. One thing we do have on this now that everyone seems to enjoy is a single, single login. The kids put in their username and password that's uh, integrated with our Active Directory. They log in. And what they do is get onto the Brightspace. There we go, let me go back to the home screen. They will be able to get into the Brightspace platform, which gives them access to all of their classes, all of their grades, their schedules. In the CAMS content, they can access all the administrative functions with the exception of registration. So for us, the kids can go onto the application, they can pay their bill, they can accept and decline financial aid, they can look at schedules, they can communicate with advisors, they can look at degree audits. So phase two for us is going to be rolling out registration and then some of the other business functions. And just one moment. There we go. Click the wrong button. I'm not sure why that one's coming up, everybody. It should be my KWC instead of a Georgia Southern. Let me just do this. Uh, so in any event, we're not Georgia Southern, but Kentucky Wesleyan. The two, Brightspace and CAMS, those are the most used functions. In fact, the analytics I pulled up yesterday, aside from the menu home screen, which has a 1,000 hits, Brightspace and CAMS are running second and third with over 600 and 700 hits, respectively. That is one nice thing about the platform also. I can pick up analytics on a daily basis and see how many hits we have, which are the most positively received apps, which ones are the least used, et cetera. But I know I went through that fairly quickly, but one thing I have to say again about the process, the application process went smoothly. The implementation took just a matter of weeks. So a quick presentation follows along with a you know, quick implementation. Now, with that said, uh, I think we might be at the question and answer session, Vincent. Hey, Brian. Uh, we got one question in the pane. Let me pick that up. This is from Richard Strong from Limestone, and he says, how long does the implementation take if our FT is about 8,500? Uh, does the number of users increase the cost? Now, I cannot answer to the cost. That would be one for you, Vincent. But implementation, um, from the time we started with the discovery to the final phase, Unified was faster with implementing the system than I was able to get information from my vendors. Implementation took us less than two months. Thank you. And uh, Brian, let me, let me uh, address the latter part of the question, which is, does the number of users increase the cost? The answer to that is no. Firstly, um, because you you know you're going to be the member of the consortium, you you're taking advantage of the grant, uh, the licensing and the um, implementation cost is covered. So all you'll be paying for is a support cost, which is a flat uh, flat, flat cost. So the short answer is no. <clears throat> There's another question coming up, uh, Brian, and this is does integration accomplished directly from ERP database, or do you export from the ERP to a static file, uh, then into the mobile app? No, actually, for the ERP, it comes straight from the database. There's no flat file transfer at all. Now, I might put a, just a caveat there. I would assume 
if I'm not familiar with some of the bigger um, ERPs, I would assume that you're able to do the same thing since we're able to extract straight from our database and we're with a smaller vendor. I'm assuming the larger vendors have that same functionality. The question is from Michael. Uh, Michael, I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's give everybody to, you know, ask uh, questions. Just a reminder, if any, anybody has questions for Brian or myself, uh, you can go to the question part of, uh, you know, uh, the qu question part of the category in the, you know, in the go to meeting question pane, uh, and then, you know, ask your uh, questions. There's another one coming, and this is, uh, is the mobile app open right now for us? Uh, the Oh, yes. The question is, we're running this grant, and, uh, you know, I'll also quickly walk you guys through what are the grants available uh, that you can take advantage of. Uh, so let me let me quickly cover that as well while I'm, you know, addressing the grant question. Uh, Campus Consortium runs about four to five grants in a month. Uh, of course, it has a, you know, deadline date. Mobile app is currently running, and the deadline is August 31st. Uh, of course, like I said earlier, it covers licensing and implementation cost. The other, the other uh, that we are running, are self-service password management suite grant. This is, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, again uh, for August 31st. Uh, single sign-on and identity grant. Uh, you know, this will uh, run out, run all the way till September 14th. Single sign-on, of course, what we do is, just a quick one, uh, you can take advantage of three applets as part of the implementation, and uh, 100, uh, 100 uh, active sessions is free as part of the grant. Offers 365 migration grant, uh, and, and the con consortium is going to fund almost 50% of the total project. This is uh, running up to September 15th. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a little bit about the grant. Uh, I can see, Brian, that we don't have any more questions. So, uh, you know, I can now, uh, I, I can, I can wrap this up. We've basically come to the end of today's session. And I would like to thank, uh, you, Brian, for presenting for us here today. Uh, it's an honor for us to have you here. Uh, I would like to thank, uh, you know, our audience as well for joining us. Uh, if you, want to apply, you can visit our website at campusconsortium.org or simply submit your grant application at grant application at campusconsortium.org. You will receive this deck in the form of an email after the session is concluded. If you have any questions or you want to connect with Brian, you can simply send an email at info at campusconsortium.org. Once again, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, our audience. Uh, and uh, before I go, Brian, do you want to say, uh, do you want to say anything before we go? Uh, again, Vincent, I appreciate the opportunity to let folks know how pleased we are with the um, grant process and the and the mobile app. It's been a very very well received project. Thank you, Brian. All right. Uh, once again, thank you everybody for joining us. And uh, this is Vincent uh, and Brian on behalf of Campus Consortium signing off. Thank you. <laughs>